Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Shan Bunny TV. I hope that you guys have been blessed, touched, and inspired, but much more informed on my other videos so far. Today's video is going to be a little bit more in depth. Um, it's going to have a lot more details. And I hope that this will also bring some insight, information, and encouragement to you all. Okay, alright guys, so let's get into it my lupus nephritis story so I'm gonna start by talking about um, when I first got diagnosed I first got diagnosed when I was 27 years old I just had my daughter um, well not just she was three at the time and um, I felt healthy I never really went to the doctors for anything maybe for a uh, flu or cold um, maybe aches and pains here and there because after my first child um, I kind of suffered some back aches uh, I believe it was due to the epidural but anyways that's not the point <laughs> the point is that I was 27 when I got diagnosed with lupus um, more specifically lupus nephritis I had no idea what that was I think I've only heard of lupus maybe once and it was from another friend who suffered um, lupus but I didn't know what kind of lupus the only thing she had told me was that it affected her bones and that was the first time I've actually heard of what it is I didn't care at the time to go and research it um, I just knew that she was in pain a lot and in and out of the hospital um, not knowing that I would have encountered similar events in my own life later on um, so how I actually got diagnosed was I was um, going on vacation I was going to Jamaica um, for 10 days and I left work the night before and I went to go to the pharmacy to pick up I don't know I think it was just some essentials that I needed for traveling however I had this ear ache and a headache that accompanied the ear ache and I was in so much pain and I kept saying to myself Shan you need to just thug it out bear it because you have a flight first thing in the morning and you haven't been to Jamaica in so long and it's a vacation that you deserve and you're just gonna have to bear it anyways I decided you know what this is actually really painful and it could be something else so just go to the ER I went to the emergency room and the doctor that saw me was like oh it's just an ear infection um, I'm just gonna give you he prescribed some pain meds for 10 days which was pretty much the amount of pain medication that would have held me over for my stay my vacation in Jamaica so I'm going on the plane and I'm just I'm just taking the whole entire plane ride going to the airport leaving the airport and my entire trip was all painkillers I took painkillers every four to six hours just to help me get through my time so I knew something was wrong when the ear and the headache lasted for over six days I told myself as soon as I get back to the States I'm gonna go to the hospital because I need to figure this out prior to my trip I had seen a dermatologist and a rheumatologist 
I saw them both because when I first saw the dermatologist, he did a biopsy on a sore that was over my eye. I don't know if it's this side or this side. So he took a piece of my skin um, and biopsied. He called me with the results and he informed me, the dermatologist informed me that I had lupus. Um, at the time, it was just lupus of the skin. And he said to me, something I'll never forget, he said, you need to go and see a rheumatologist right away because this may eventually become systemic. Once again, he's using terms that I was unfamiliar with. Um, I didn't know what he meant by it's only on the outside now, but it can, it, it may turn into something systemic. So I made the appointment and I went to go see a rheumatologist. Um, I saw the rheumatologist and she ran some tests. However, she running the tests, we couldn't, because of my trip, you know, vacation, it didn't come back in time. When I returned back to New York, I end up having some kind of breathing issue. I, I remember couldn't breathe, I could not breathe. I also remember the sores started to appear under my eye, right by my nose, in my ear, and in my scalp. And I kept thinking, what are these things? But they were all just painful and they were cutting in my skin and in my scalp. Um, I remember just feeling numb in my fingers, my fingertips. Um, turning red and uh, green, just different colors. Um, I was in uh, joint pains. My knees were hurting, my ankles, um, my arms, elbows. I mean, just aches everywhere. Still had no clue what was happening. I went to go see um, a dermatologist that I'd seen before for my atopic dermatitis which is what they had told me initially when they saw the um the scarring on my face that it, oh it was just atopic dermatitis everything's okay i went to go see this particular dermatologist that was recommended by a friend i saw her and she immediately as soon as i walked in her office she said to me you need to go see uh, a doctor at the emergency room so I'm calling ahead just take this note she wrote a note and she said I should hand it in at the ED and um, I shouldn't be alarmed but you're having a lupus flare I go what is that she we went through what it was and she's like listen right now you don't have time you're experiencing shortness of breath you're experiencing all these rashes and sores everywhere you're in ache you're in pain you're not feeling yourself um i had to walk i want to say less than um maybe about 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 mile I don't even know how many feet that translates into. However, it wasn't far. It was a decent walk. I had to go up a hill and the hospital was right at the top of the hill. Usually for an active 27 year old, that would have been a hop and a skip. But in my head, in my body, it felt like it was miles away. I literally felt, felt as if I was dying. So I, I made it to the ED, got there, hand them, handed them the note, and immediately at the, the, the nurse came in um, and other attendant staff members came in. They met me with a wheelchair and they were like, we have to get you on medication and drugs right now. So I go, okay, what's happening? I mean, it was just rush, 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 rush. Um, I did want, I want to know what was going on, but at the time, everything and everyone was just moving so quickly. I was not able to get the answer that I received later on, but at the time, I, no one was able to answer me. Um, and even if they did, it was all in passing. So I was still confused at that time. They, were, they had to give me IV. Um, and then they gave me, I believe at the time they had given me 
um, it was steroids and they told me that if I should call family and let them know that you're in the hospital and um, everything's gonna be okay I believe I stayed there for a week and that week they had given me um, steroids through IV they also um, did a kidney biopsy and they reached out to my um, my derma, not my dermatologist, my rheumatologist, who was also in affiliation with that same hospital. She actually got the call first um, from my dermatologist. They're all affiliated, so they, you know, they uh, cross each other's paths. So I spoke with her, and she said to me, "I, in fact." whatever she assumed before she didn't want to say it to me as yet until she was a hundred percent certain but she um she was calling to confirm that it was lupus of the kidneys so what it did to me really was it started showing on my face then it left from my face it went away from my face then it started to manifest in my ear both ears but mostly in the right ear and then it left from my ear and then it kind of stayed in my ear rather and then it just traveled to my scalp it it liked these areas the front area not too much in the back but more front and in the middle um i had to pretty much remove whatever braids or Weave. I can't remember what hairstyle I was wearing at the time, but it all had to be out um, in order for them to exam and see and s examine my head, scalp, ears, everything, and see where these lesions were. Now, um, after I stayed in the hospital, I was giving about, I want to say maybe I was prescribed about 17 different drug and medication. Um, at the time, it was just uh, stage two, I believe, which was, you know, fairly just the beginning stages. What they told me was that it's not like cancer, where you have stage one, stage two, you know, and so forth. But this um, is pretty much, uh, it's similar, but it's not the same. I was still confused about that. However, um, they told me that it's okay. Um, we have drugs and medicine that will help kind of slow the progress down and help to keep the, the, the um, lupus nephritis stable. And I said, okay. I then had to stop working. I had, at the time, she was three. And, you know, just single mom being diagnosed with lupus nephritis have no idea what it was and just totally blindsided mind you I had a social life I was working three jobs at the time I was just you know living my best life and not having illness or sickness in my peripheral I just was doing me and um, when I got diagnosed and just everything how it was happening and how fast things were going it took an emotional psychological heaviness it took a toll on me and I remember just feeling so alone I remember feeling there is no way I could this could be my life. I didn't feel like God was there for me. I felt alone. I felt as if this was a curse. I felt as a 27 year old young lady, how can this be happening to me? I had a lot of questions, but I didn't ask them because I was scared. I was scared to ask God why. I was scared to question him. I was scared that it might be blasphemy. And um, I didn't, I remember just bottling everything inside. And I, I cried 
almost every day for the time that I was home with my daughter, not working. Um, I remember falling into depression. I didn't even know what being depressed was, <laughs> but I remember not feeling happy. Felt like my entire world was crashing and I didn't know how to ask for help. I just got up one day and decided I was just gonna pray. I was just gonna pray my way through because the only thing and the only person that can help me get through this has to be God. And that's what I did. I started to pray and that helped me so much because in prayer does work. It really does and it helped me. Um, it helped me to get through those dark days. And even though it was in the spring and summer, I it was dark, it was cold. It felt as if I was in the bitter winter with no sun shining and not seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel. So after praying, I started to journal a lot. Um, I started to just write goals and things that I wanted, wanted to get done on a weekly basis. I also wrote down questions from my doctors. Um, I had to see a whole bunch of specialists at the time. So I still had my dermatologist for the rash, my rheumatologist for, you know, the lupus nephritis. Um, I saw a blood doctor. Um, I believe I also saw a kidney doctor, um, of course, because it's um, nef nephritis. Um, and I saw a couple other doctors. I wish I had seen a psychologist. However, I didn't feel the need to at the time, but I got through it. And for the most part, I started to pick myself up. I started to take care of myself mentally, spiritually, and physically. I started working out. I started running. I started um, going back to the gym. I started to feel whole again. And I started to feel like me again. And I could tell the difference in the interaction that I had with my daughter. You could tell she was so happy to see mommy up and going again. And it felt normal for her. So that was good that I was able to pour into her. Um, because for a little while I was not, I, w I was not myself. So how could I expect to pour into my daughter when I wasn't me? Um, my mom was there a lot to help me. Thank God for mommy. And, um, she was able to take my daughter. So I'm able to kind of, you know, get back into the, the, the groove of things into the order of things. So once my daughter was with her and I kind of got myself back together, I was down to about, I want to say maybe one or two pills. Um, that's how great I was doing and it felt good. And I decided I was going to change my diet. I decided I was going to cut my hair. Um, I did suffer some hair loss due to one of the medication. I was taking a blood pressure medication that the side effect was hair loss. So when I realized my hair was falling out, I just decided to cut it off. I cut everything off and decided, all right, just new hair, new me. <laughs> and that's what I did. Anyways, fast forward, I um, ended up moving from one place to the, to the next, from one state to the next, and um, everything was going well. So at the time, my daughter was now uh, five. When she was five, I found out that I um, was expecting a second child. Now, my rheumatologist informed me, please, don't have this child 
because this can be detrimental to your health and the health of the baby. I was devastated. I was not thinking along the lines of termination. I didn't want to terminate my baby. Um, and at, at that time I was uh, not thinking about children. However, I was around 30 years old and I was like, you know what? Hmm. I'm going to go to God in prayer on this one because this is so much bigger than me. And that's what I did. I went to God and I said, Lord, you have given me the gift of carrying children. You have given me this baby and I'm going to trust you. I ask that you just, just give me a sign. Let me know. Tell me what you want me to do. And um, I remember waking up one morning and the Holy Spirit was like, if you've trusted me before, you can trust me again. And that's what I did. I trusted God the entire pregnancy and I had the most beautiful pregnancy. I had no issues, zero. Um, they had me on one particular drug, which, was called, which is called Plaquenil. And um, I was nervous about taking it because I kept thinking, oh my gosh, what, what about side effects to my baby? I just kept thinking about my baby, not even thinking about me. Um, I knew it, I was familiar with the drug, but my baby was not familiar with it. So I remember going to the pharmacist and asking questions like, do you know the side effects? And has there any been any research on, you know, something passed down um, to my baby? And everything was, was just incomplete. Nothing was certain. They weren't sure. Um, research, there was no in-depth research. And even up to this day, it's still, we don't know. My daughter is now six years old and she seems normal. She seems okay, but I don't know what long-term effects, you know, can follow from being pregnant with a child um, and taking Plaquenil. So that's something that I'm still yet to find out. Anyway, so I went ahead and I um, had my daughter and I remember I was seeing a rheumatologist at the time and that rheumatologist said to me I want you to I had to see the rheumatologist let me bring it back I had to see the rheumatologist very often he had to pretty much monitor my entire pregnancy um, I was what you would call a high-risk pregnancy and I needed to do like stress tests, you know, everything just to make sure um, that I would have been fit to carry my child. Now, my daughter was um, born full term, um, healthy baby girl. Uh, there were no complications. It was beautiful. Uh, she was born just like that. Um, I had her naturally. And I want to say maybe about three months later, that's when, not destruction, but that's when things got really, really hard for me. Um, my rheumatologist was very concerned. He ran some tests and he saw that my lupus nephritis started to become angry. So most people may or may not know but when you are pregnant and going through a pregnancy um, women our bodies go through changes and it's usually not life or death especially in a healthy young lady now when you when your immune system and your you know your your you are being compromised at some point most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, your organs can start to send signals of distress. And that's what happened in my, my case. Not everybody's pregnancies are the same. Everyone's different. Some are similar. But in my case, my kidneys started to shut down. Um... 
during that time, I had to send my daughter away, um, the baby away to my mom, so I can take care of myself. That too was hard, being a mother, being diagnosed, and then going through the woes of illness and sickness, and, and then doing it on your own. It was, it was tough, it was hard, and I had to do it, I had no choice. Um, I missed her, I missed my kids, missed being away from them, but mommy had to get better, and that's what I did. I made sure I took all my meds, and by the way, I was on at least 20 medications. What they tried to do, they tried to give me some immune suppressant drugs, you know, trying to suppress my immune system so it wouldn't progress. And um, I did that for, I want to say maybe about a year or two of all these medication. I mean, prednisone and Celsept, it was just numerous amounts. Blood pressure medication, because we all know that the kidneys are in charge of that as well, your blood pressure. So it's, 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 it was very, very hard for me to process this entire ordeal again. So I processed it years before and now here it is coming back, but this time it's coming back with force. This time it's my kidneys are getting punches and hits and scars because the scars that were on my face now started to scar in my, my inside, in my kidneys. That's where the systemic part of it comes from. So where the scars were now, you can see the scars on my face. My face was very clean and very clear, but now the scarring were, was, was more in, inside, was on my kidneys. Um, I did numerous amount of, I think I did three or four um, kidney biopsies. Um, I had about 10 different hospital visits. I mean, hospital visits became my lifestyle. And they tried to save the kidneys as much as they could, but the amount of scar and tissue that was impacted on, this, on the kidney, they, they tried. And so it was too late. So pretty much that hospital that hospital visit was um, what caused me or what allowed me to recognize the severity of the damage or the hit that was taken um, to my kidneys um, after, after the pregnancy and just body going through all those changes. Um, I ended up starting dialysis that same day and um, it continued um, for about um, three years, nine months, but who was counting anyways? So um, a lot of people, this is actually my first time really talking about it openly because I was not, there was a couple things that ran through my mind. One, I think I was just in denial, like there's no way this could be happening. So just carry on with your merry life. And I did some of that for my mental health, also for my children. Um, they needed to see a healthy mom. They didn't need to see someone who was sick or someone who was weary. And I tried to put my poker face on every single day for them. So with that said, there were times when I really was not feeling well. But my daughters wanted to go to the park or they wanted to go to the beach. I just either took some kind of medication to help me get through it and I, you know, I just wanted to give them the best mom I could give them at that time. If things were really, really bad and I became really ill where I wasn't able to drive or go with them on outings or special events, I would just stay home with them. I tried to compensate as much as I could, but there were times when it was just out of my hands. Um, so, you know, of course, mother's guilt. I felt guilty 
oftentimes where I wasn't able to give them as much love and go to as many activities that I would love to but I tried my very best even if it meant you know working through the pains and the aches and just the discomfort of just feeling sick and feeling not well I tried to do that um, anyway so just doing dialysis three days a week that was also just something that I had to deal with um, my oldest knew had an idea of you know what I was doing and where I was going and how long I went for but the baby she didn't care as long as I, I as long as I was around she 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 had no idea what was happening um, she just knew I left and then I came back and that was pretty much her entire world so I did that for a couple of years and I was listed on the transplant um, on the kidney transplant list and I was listed in two different states um, that also was a journey in itself because being on dialysis is not easy and it was not easy and I was pretty much the only young girl that was there a uh, majority of the people who are on dialysis are older people um, mi yeah, mid age older you know you hardly found people in their 20s or 30s and when you did see them in their 20s and 30s it was scarce rare maybe one or two people and I was of that one or two uh, so that would take me to my other journey which is what I would share in a different video which is probably the most exciting insane insane in a good way video um, next that I'm doing next so I just hope that me sharing my journey and being transparent with you all that will help somebody I want you guys to know that not because you received a diagnosis whether it's lupus whether it's cancer whether it's it's something to that you believe might deter you from your future from your dreams don't allow it to don't allow it to blind you or blind your future or dumb you because a diagnosis is not who you are that's not your identity and I told myself that every single day I looked to myself in the mirror and say Shan you are not who they say you are you are not a diagnosis you are not a sickness you are not an illness and that's not your portion that's not who God wants you to be live he wants you to live and that's what I did it wasn't easy at times there were times when I did feel as if I was never gonna make it and that's on everything however God found it fit to encourage me each and every day pick me up to carry me through and he can do the same for you my friend so be encouraged I'd like to make one thing clear when you are going through any kind of illness any kind of physical illness um, the body is going through a countless amount of changes so you're being affected physically and when you are affected sometimes you are so tunnel vision on yourself and how it affects you that you are completely oblivious to others around you. I am guilty of that. I am guilty of when I'm ill, when I'm not well, I only thought about me. Because I just believe that there's no way anybody else could be affected by what I'm going through. I'm the one that's hurting. I'm the one that's that this whole ordeal is happening to so nobody understands that's false <laughs> that is a false narrative and I hope this video will help to change somebody's mindset of when they become ill or when someone is ill that it only affects the person it does not 
it affects everyone around you. It affects every. It affected everyone around me. Everybody, even your children, even your kids are affected. You need to understand that once you are in something, everyone else is in the boat with you. Be mindful of that. You can't be selfish with your thoughts. And I use selfish in the most loving way. When you are ill or when you are sick, be mindful of those other people who are either praying for you, taking care of you. They are looking at you helplessly. They may want to help. All they could do is probably hand you a towel if you have to throw up. All they could do is give you a bottle of water if you're thirsty. But that's just their way of expressing concern for you. But you're not alone. People are out there always willing to hear, willing to listen, willing to help. And if even if you don't feel like it, I'm here. That's why God called me. Because some people out there, they don't have those resources. They don't even feel like they need to speak to anyone. They're probably scared or nervous of feeling vulnerable or transparent, ashamed of, you know, just scared of being labeled. Well, I'm here to tell you, get over those fears. I'm here to bring light to that darkness. I'm here to remind you that God never leave or forsake his people that he loves you and you are his own all right this is where i'm gonna leave you all i hope that this was a good video for you remember to like subscribe and share i will leave you with this remember you are the head and never the tail you are above and not beneath no weapon that is formed against you shall ever prosper.